if you're going to use discrete router bits to create your crown molding, it requires quite a bit of uh, setup on your router table to accomplish that. Another option you would have is to put router bits in a router table this way, more of a one piece unit, you know, more profiles in one piece, and then put a fence in the back side, and then hold the board and try to keep it against the fence as you go past. Or, and in my case, the most preferred way of doing it is setting up a table and a power feeder and a horizontal router and uh, making your, your molding this way. Again, it's very safe, it's very consistent, and, uh, and it's hands-free. My bits of choice for making crown molding is this Frude setup. As you can see in this uh, little place card, you've got one bit, it's already in my router, that will cut the lower section. And then you have a second bit that cuts the upper section. In this case, that's the upper section bit. The, the nice thing about the Frude bits is you can use several of their or all of their crown molding bits in different combinations to really um, increase the uh, variety of profiles that you can cut. These fruit bits, the cutting surface is two and three quarters and then you have the other part of, you know, you've got that, that's the upper piece and the lower piece, two and three quarters, two and three quarters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make up some stock that's five and a half inches wide and then I'll begin the process. Okay, I've got my stock cut, five and a half, five and a half. This one is two foot long. I'm going to use this as my test board. This is what I'm going to base all my router bit adjustments on. <clears throat> and then in this case, I'm going to just run a three foot piece through just to show you how to use that, um, that router table setup to make your molding. Okay, my first step is I'm going to dial this bit in. I'm going to walk it towards you see it's moving, and if I need to, I'll raise the bit. I like to do it this way. Okay, so I can see where I'm trying to end this piece here. This is my final cut. This is not used uh, in this case in what I'm making. So what I'm going to do, I have that board up against the fence, and I'm going to walk that back to where these, this edge here of the bevel meets up with that piece. And I'm going to... Just uh, touch on it a little bit, see what it looks like when I cut, and then we'll take it from there. First thing I'm going to do is actually lower this bit back down. Okay, I just want to cut a little bit the first time just to get a feel for it. I've waxed my table. I've also waxed this back horizontal table. I've lowered the bit, my uh, test piece on, and then what I do, I swing my power feeder over and I'm going to adjust the height of this to where it's on the board, pressing it down. That way, that will eliminate the possibility of chatter and burn marks. I've got the height set. I've got the uh, arm set to a certain point. I got the bit almost center. That way I've got two wheels on the back, two wheels on the front. And you can see the board rolls right through. Again, it's pushing it right against this fence the whole time. So I'm going to just put this board in, look at it, grabs it and it forces it right against the fence. So again, you won't have any profile drift that maybe you would get if you were uh, trying to do it by hand. The bit set just coming above the table surface. I'm going to run this uh, test board through to see about that front to back alignment of the bit. I'm going to put on my dust collection and I got my hearing protection. In my case, I use uh, the Bose noise canceling earbuds. These things are amazing. I do have the over ear ones. These little earbuds are just as good as the uh, over the ear ones. Uh, they're quite expensive, but um, you know, it, I can wear these all the time in my shop comfortably. Okay, so what I found out from that first pass is I'm looking at this finish here, okay? And you see that wave? That's because it's not set up right. So I'm going to adjust 
Uh, let's see. I've got a little bit of a notch there. See that right there? That little shoulder? I'm going to get rid of that shoulder and I'm also going to adjust the power feeder to press down a little harder. We're going to do a second pass and see if we've got the power feeder uh, pressure down on the board set right and also the bit alignment. Alright, now that I'm satisfied with the bit alignment, I'm going to run my, uh, what I would consider my final piece of uh, wood through. And uh, that'll be another way of verifying everything looks right. The power feeder is not uh, hesitating as it pulls the board through anymore. And then as I do this, uh, when I make my second pass in this board, I will also keep um, milling my uh, test piece. Okay, I'm running my pieces through. That's the main piece. Here's the dummy one. <clears throat> How many times do I pass it through? Well, what I'm trying to do is, as you can see in their, their uh, picture here, this curvature, that's the curvature I'm shooting for, okay, on the bit. And then what happens is this will be a flat board, and I'll cut that piece with the other router bit. Well, what I'm trying to do is I want to walk up on that profile to where this curvature is flush or smooth or maybe slightly stepped down. Uh, let me see if I can draw it like that, okay? And of course that's like a hundred times more of a, uh, it's an exaggeration of what I'm looking for. And then what will happen is when I use the other router bit, it'll round over to that and you'll have a flush surface there. So I see that little bit of a line there, if I can, there you go, you can see it right there. Now I know that I've got the full uh, profile of that bit on the board, and that's where I'll stop cutting that one. The other indication is this uh, piece here, it's completely rounded over. Okay, and, and setup-wise, I just want to show you what's involved. So now, um, I'm getting ready to change the bit to the upper bit. So I'll come over here on this baby power feeder, take this handle, loosen it, all right? And now, power feeder comes out of the way. I have access to my bit. I'll change the bit, and when I've got the new bit in, I'll just swing this over, come back over here, and lock this handle in. This is the same thickness material as I'm, I'm making the other crown molding with, my test piece and my real crown molding. So what I'll do is I'll run this through just so I can find out about that inside edge against the horizontal route. I'm pretty comfortable with the uh, shoulder cut right there, and then you can see there's the cove. And this curvature right here is what's going to meet the uh, other side of the uh, cram molding. So I'm comfortable with that. Again, if you had a piece sticking out, you're too far out. And then you just walk it back in until you get that nice uh, piece there. I take about a quarter turn on this uh, Shopsmith Joint Matic each pass. The first one I try to go shallow just to get a feel for um, proper speed. Again, I wish that this power feeder had one setting slower. Unfortunately it doesn't so I just have to be really careful with how much I take off each time. Okay, so I'm at the start. I lowered the bit a little bit, I took a nice uh, small shallow pass and now all I'm going to just keep repeating this. I just want to take a break and show you where we're at with this. Now, this curvature, there's still a flat spot here, and again, there's that little teeny recess right on this inside there, and that's the complete curvature of that piece. So we're trying to walk this up now slowly, this curvature meeting that other curve. And once we get there, we're done with the two profile bits. And I always make that adjustment, of course, is with that uh, test board. Next part will be to cut the bevels here and here. This will be the ceiling cut 
and this will be the wall cut. Now we're going to use the third bit and we'll walk over there and I'm going to mount this bit into my uh, router table and that is the uh, last uh, two cuts we need to make to make a complete piece of crown mold. So now I'm going to mount my router up. I've got a three horsepower router up here um, and it's got this uh, tightener here. What I found is um, I can't tighten it by hand uh, as much as it should be. So I cut out these on my scroll saw and then I can just put this on the handle like that and tighten it down. All right, I'm gonna put the bit in and then we'll get back to uh, the next part of the video. Our next step, we're looking at that uh, 38 and 52 degrees. Coming over here now, I've got my bit set up. I'm gonna do this in two passes. This is, uh, that's exactly what we're going for right there. Okay, when you flip over that top side, you can see we're taking some off that surface. So what I'm gonna do the first time is I'm gonna take about half of that so I don't chip anything. And then I'll go to that, uh, I'll readjust the fence and get down to my final size. <laughs> I moved my fence and now I'm going to make the second cut to where this shoulder and this shoulder are milled and uh, make that top edge and that's a th the 38 degree angle here and that's the 52. The 38 needs to be here. If you look at this trim when you put it down if I put it this way let me just show you see how far it goes up the fence it sticks out really far. Since this is the bottom profile when you put it up, you see the difference in the height. Now this angle, if this were the ceiling and this were the wall, that angle is much more proper. It's not the trim is uh, not too far out. So I'm going to cut that and then we'll uh, go to the bottom cut. So I've got that top bevel done, and the way that that bit is designed, that V shape, the inside of the V is a round over, so you get a nice, smooth, rounded radius surface there. So I've got that side cut, so now I'm going to do the other side, the lower side, and again I just flip the board over and I get those two uh, angles that we need, um, and they're opposite for the top and the bottom. Now I'll run it through this way and I'll get the, uh, the bottom angle correct. And uh, just remember, uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a shallow pass. I'll do it in two or three passes. And the only reason I do it that way is I just don't like to, um, you know, chunk out, chip out any of the wood. And, uh, you know, again, you're talking one or two passes, maybe three, and you'll get a uh, better finish. So be patient and do it uh, safely. That's after the first pass, and again, I'm going to eliminate this flat spot right there. That's going to come up. This angle is going to meet this face right there. I'm ready to make my final pass. Now, this bit needs to be up really high because that V, it's a soft shoulder. We're trying to put that on that edge. If the bit is too low, this has a soft shoulder here, um, and that was created by the other profile bits. All right. If I don't have this bit high enough up, I'm going to cut that off. It's going to be a sharp edge. It's really not a big deal. Um, you can round it over yourself with sandpaper. But I'm going to try to do it without um, changing uh, or, or uh, altering this shoulder at all. See how it turns out. I know when I made my other uh, molding that I showed you in the video uh, that's already finished, this didn't come into play when I was using this bit. That's why I mentioned about the height up and down as far as making these shoulder cuts. But I know on this bit, it may be worth trying to see what happens if I leave that piece on. So again, I will try making that and see what, uh, what the answer is to that question. 
Also remember you're going to have the snipe here. It's about an inch and a quarter or so and it's on the side. It's all the way across. So uh, always account for having snipe. I'm sure you're going to always make your molding much longer than you need and also make sure you, you make more than you think you need.